Melanin, are we on? Are we good? Yes, we are. Yes, run fast. Let's do this. Hey, what's up, everybody? This is your girl, Miss P. I hope that you are doing fabulous, darling. I am doing fantastic. Make sure to go ahead and thumbs up this video. That lets me know that you enjoy the reviews and you want me to keep them coming. Subscribe if you haven't already. Make sure to follow me on my social media, including now Snapchat. I'm loving this Snapchat. I am loving it. And feature points. I haven't talked about feature points in a minute. It's awesome. Make sure you go ahead and download it. Use my code down below. Play the games, accumulate the points, and then you cash them in for like PayPal credit, Amazon gift cards, the list goes on and on, and Starbucks. Uh -huh. It's great. Yeah. From the title above, I know I'm super late on this love and hip hop review when y'all put finally like that really puts like a dagger in my heart like bitch finally let's quit all the blabbing let's go ahead and get into this review harley red is back in atlanta to get her ring appraised she is done with life so she enlists the help of jessica penny jessica dime was like you know what this is such a mess i knew dime was full of shit so i'm going with my friend to get this ring appraised <sighs> that hazy as shit gumball ring ah! when dime called it a middle of the mall ass ring i loved it i'm gonna use that from now on now i love middle of the mall ass rings for like everyday wear when you're at work you know things like that you wash your hands a lot you need a middle this is a middle of the ass mall ring i get people asking me about this ring all the time and i'm like man i don't know where this is from forever 21 charlotte roos take your pick somewhere like that one of them throwaway rings when the dude said but when the jeweler said um this is probably ten dollars mm, maybe ten with the plastic around. Oh, damn, bitch. Yeah, this is, yeah, I'm sorry. Mm, in the words of Envy. Damn it, man. It's time for the slow music. Stevie and Mimi are meeting up. Mimi finally wants to put Stevie on child support for their daughter, Eva. Uh-oh, y'all know I live now. My baby hair ain't down because, you know, um, the sun has been kicking my ass and I just got home. But, aside from the point, I love me a good slick. I love me a good edge control. And Mimi's was just as slick. Uh, Mimi talking about, um, Stevie is back in our life for our daughter. Eva is 28, ma'am. I mean, when were you gonna put him on the support? What were you gonna do, ma'am? I think we need to talk about child support for Chicken Nugget. Yeah, he feeling some type of way because she now wants to get a check from him. I'm like, boy, bye. Go send that check. Have a good day. Talking about this is what you wanted. Like, you in the business world now, baby girl. That is scheming and plotting. Scheming and plotting. All out the blue. I understand you want your check for little baby Eva, but I mean, Jocelyn had to let you know to get your coin. Tommy is taking ballet for therapy because I was like, ain't no way she is in formation and twirling all over the place. This how She's in therapy. AK comes to see her. Lord, <laughs> I love my man. I do, but he does not have a stroller. KK has a stroller for the little dog. I was over it. And he just sitting in there like, I'm a human. <laughs> this is how I knew something was really up with Tommy. She is drunk at the ballet, bitch. I was done. I was over it. They talk about LA and what had happened was. So basically, Tommy was saying, child, I can't even impersonate Tommy because she was so lit. It was ridiculous. She said that her, huh, Jocelyn and Stevie, they didn't have a threesome, but there was some play involved. She woke up the next morning. She was in the hotel room. Uh, Stevie had told her that they could do some music or whatever. She was like, yeah, let's do it. I guess he had came to the hotel room, and he was trying to push up on her, but she was like, nah, I don't want to do that. Next thing you know, uh, LAPD was at the door looking for a fugitive from ATL. And she thinks that Jocelyn was the one that set it up. Jocelyn was the only one who had my room number. Girl, your room number is for the hotel staff, too. Anybody could have known you in there. I mean, Jocelyn, that bitch is crazy, especially this season. So she probably did it. But I'm just saying, I've come to realize, and we all know this, that Tommy really gives no fucks at all. Out of nowhere, she starts crying about scrap, saying that was her world. KK is like, Ben, get your life together, ma'am. I love you, but I can't deal with you like this. You really need to get your life straight. And KK, she was correct. Tommy, I'm a mm -mm, prayer circle for Tommy, a semi-closed prayer circle. I don't want it fully closed. Scrap meets up with Waka's boo, Tammy, so that he can talk about the band and get some advice, not device, but advice you did for his beautiful woman. He needs some advice, you feel me? Talking about what the next step is, Scrap said his next step was a connecting necklace. <laughs> 
I was loving what Tammy said aside from the conversating, but I was loving how she said she needs, the Bambi, needs a foundation. Y'all can't keep playing Ring Around the Rosies, Pocket Full of Poses, Ashes, Ashes. Y'all ass them fell down. What else are you going to do? You need a foundation. And he like, yo, a found, like you, she need a house. Like I can do that. She more like a jelly sandwich. You feel me? And she's like, no, a ring, a last name. He's like, Ugh. good job, Tammy. Scrap needed a push. Do I think they're ready to get married? Hell no. To the no, no, no. But I see where you're moving in that door. Oh, whoa. That, that was loud about like Scrappy. <laughs> what? Are they ready for that? I don't think so. No. Mm -mm -mm. The found more like a home, something like that. Maybe another a new dog. I don't know. Maybe they can plant like, um, uh, I don't know. They can do some planting, have like an Oprah garden or something. Something that they can handle. We're at Jocelyn's video shoot with this dude named Rico. And she was saying, Rico was saying that we used to fuck on the low, but we don't. But he doesn't do nice beasts. So I'm going to work with him no matter what people think. And I'm sitting here like, don't nobody want to work with your ass but him because he probably used to get that ass. I don't know. We invited Tierra. This was just a mess fest. So Jocelyn ends up telling Tierra what had happened was in LA all about uh Tommy because you know she used to be messing with scrap and she wanted to definitely get it in there that Stevie wanted to push up on Tommy because Stevie wanted Tommy and Tommy wanted Stevie so make sure you tell scrap that whenever y'all have a phone call conversation okay I still make sure to say I didn't call the police on that bitch we don't know that bitch Speaking of Scrap, KK is packing up Scrap's apartment and she just wants to bring everything together because she is the grandmother and she got to do this for her family. So she invites over the bitch she can't stand. And that is no other than Tierra because she got her grandbaby and she want to see her grandbaby. You know what? I felt that sincerity with KK. For once, I felt some sincerity. She wasn't hard as a brick. It wasn't a lone Denzel glory tear. This was like a... <laughs> It was like she threw some designing on her face. I was like, oh my God, okay. But this is when I chuckled. When Tierra was like, so can I call you mom now? She was like, bitch, hell no. I said, we can be cordial. Jessica Dime is doing a photo shoot for her new pink hair. The Pink Peace Collection. I think that's cute because Jessica, she's the only one who can really pull that off. It's like the gray color that the girls are wearing now and the pink child baby i couldn't pull off no pink i sure couldn't pull off no gray so there's certain women who can do that this is where jessica dime gets real messy and why i can't really f with jessica dime a lot because she's messy but she doesn't think she's messy because of the way that she brings people together it's messy bit it's messy so she automatically has carly red there for supports and then she has two girls that are there one um is life's baby mother and the other one is life's um baby mother's friend who's friends with her who knew about the whole ordeal in the first place <laughs> one of the girls that i told you life's baby mother was getting a new life put in her while she was with life and life was effing around with carly red huh. while carly and the girl was talking jessica dime had the nerve to say this is personal we need to move over to the side bitch what you done put all these women together and it's on camera. Everybody just sit there and watch. Get your popcorn and your bunch of crunch. The girl is telling her, um, yeah, I had a baby with life. And she's like, no, I need some papers. There is no way. The girl pulled out the more DNA papers in the manila envelope. How the hell did you have a manila folder in your back pocket? I said, oh my God, I can't. I was so, I was even like Carly. Oh shit. He did that. He the pappy. Carly was so damn mad that she pushed the girl. The girl was ready. She took off her heels. She was ready to go. Carly is a loose cannon. Like, what did you expect to happen, girl? Like, what did you expect to happen? First of all, I don't promote violence. I didn't even know Carly was going to push the girl because Carly was the one that ended up looking like a dumbass. And then the other girl, the baby mama, was looking like a dumbass too because we sitting here like, why the hell y'all fighting over life? Life is the common denominator in this. Be mad at life, boo. KK and Stevie end up speaking. You know, they're like brother and sister from another mister. And rah, 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 rah. We still don't know what the hell happened. He claims that nothing was going on. And I would never do that. Nah, ma. I don't know. I don't put nothing past Stevie. I can't even leave a peanut butter and jelly sandwich with Stevie. I don't know what he put his beefcake on. You had, mm -mm. This was a crazy ass scene. Mimi ends up meeting with Riblet. I was like, okay, maybe they're going to get back together. But I forgot that Mimi has another girlfriend. Riblet, I didn't know, was trying to get back with Mimi. 
Riblet lost her dad and she wanted some support from Mimi, but Mimi that wasn't there for her because she was saying that she was ringing my line too many times. I didn't know what was going on with Riblet. Hold up, this is when I was like, Riblet's ass is crazy. Riblet talking about I was giving you space. I didn't say we were breaking up. Let's rewind the tape. It sounded like you were giving her a lot of space. That was a breakup in my opinion. It was like, shit, she done broke up with me. Whoa, Riblet was getting a little loud. For those of you who don't know who Riblet is, Riblet is Chris. Ooh, so I was sitting here thinking, why is Riblet so damn mad if they were taking a break? They weren't taking a break. They were still getting it popping tin while they were on a break. And Riblet was telling Mimi all about her feelings and how she wanted to make it last forever, keep sweat. And I guess in the heat of the moment, Mimi was like, mm, I guess, maybe, sort of. But Mimi claims that she never gave her any impression that she wanted to, no impression that I wanted to move forward. You are crazy. You, I was like, mm-hmm. Okay. I didn't see enough of Riblet and Mimi to really have a super big connection that I really want them to win. Like, especially after seeing this last scene, I was like, no. Nah. Everybody fight, but that was a bit much. Even when Mimi, like, threw, this is your shit. I was like, whoa. Explosion. Holly meets up with life. Must be nice. I'm sorry. I had to. <laughs> that fuck has been. I can't do it. <laughs> I used to be able to do a good life impression. I can't no more. This whole time, I forgot that life sang. I forgot. And he has the German girl that he was supposedly married to on the set. I said, Lord have mercy. Mona Scott, what the hell are you doing? She walked up to him. You're fake. You're so fake. How could you give me a fake ring? He was like, well, yes, the ring was fake. I mean, I ain't got no coins like that. But what What if it was fake, but I wanted it to be real? You, you couldn't ride for, I was like, no, if life, you cannot turn this into another situation. You gave the girl a fake ring. I mean, the setup, that was funny. But at the end, why'd you do, what are you doing, life? It's so damn delusional. Even when she brought up the chick being pregnant, he was like, yeah, I mean, I got it. Yeah, I, I mean, what you want me to do? And talk about Carly isn't focused on keeping a man happy. Like, Carly, you dodged the bullet, girl. Go, go. This is when I was really like, whoa, Oprah, ho. I need somebody that need me. I am done. Everybody wants to feel needed, but that's the girl's only hope and dream is life Jennings. Hell no. Tommy goes to see Jocelyn. I knew this wasn't going to be pretty, pretty. I knew it. You know, I, I'm never going to understand Jocelyn. I'm, I'm never gonna get it. Never gonna get it. Never gonna get it. Never. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Lord, Tommy walked in looking like she about to go bury a body. I was. <laughs> they have their usual back and forth. Bitch, you ain't gonna do shit. You ain't no money. Come on, come on, come on. That's what it sounded like. What you gonna do? Nothing. Like, that's what it sounded like. Out of nowhere. I don't know what sparked this. I can't remember. But Tommy threw the drink with the glass. Like, bye out. Jocelyn, here comes security. I mean, there was no brawling or nothing. You know Tommy. She gives no fuck. She's about that life. She was like, come on, ho. Bring it. I run this shit. I'm the boss bitch. I was like, no, no, no. Security is around you. Tommy's ass is crazy. I thought Jocelyn was crazy, but Tommy is another level of crazy. That was the episode. Down below in the comment section, let me know what did you think about this episode of Love and Hip Hop. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. And I will see you on the next video. Peace, love, and all that good stuff. God bless. Bye.